Hello and welcome back to another vlog. Guess what? The Hackathon app is finished. It's been submitted to the App Store. It's been approved and just waiting to be released. Now I know that was quite a jump from the last vlog. Let me show you what the app looks like. It looks like this. Before I explain to you what this app does and how we got here from last vlog, just announcing that we're starting this app, let's take a walk and I'll explain it all. All right, so we're on a path that's right behind my house and I promise you, this walk is related to the app idea. We'll get to that. But first, the last vlog that I recorded was on August 20th. And that week I announced we were gonna do this hackathon app. So the first thing I did was start brainstorming some app ideas and looking at trends. But that ultimately led me down a path I got stuck on. So I was looking at trends. Trends obviously right now being AI, a lot of those types of apps. And one of the easiest apps to make money from what I can see, are chatbots. So a chatbot is essentially just a wrapper on AI and you can theme it. So it's like AI therapist or AI girlfriend or AI life coach, things like that. But the thing I was wrestling with was that I wasn't really interested in building a chatbot. And I felt like I was just doing it because I knew it would get searched and downloaded and potentially make money. But my heart wasn't into building something like that. Now, the second approach I went down was to build like scratch your own itch type of ideas. And this led me down a path where I started doing some keyword research for ASO uh, on these app ideas. So this included a uh, coloring page generator because my kids are young and we still Google image search coloring pages all the time. And sometimes we can't find what we're looking for. Another one of the scratch your own itch ideas is a relationship keeper type of idea that keeps your relationships top of mind. So with your friends, with your family, with your spouse, uh, just because, you know, when you're really focused on your goal and your ambitions and that's all you want to do, sometimes it's really hard to remember to reach out and to connect with people. So those are my ideas, but I couldn't really find good keywords that looked promising that would bring traffic. And Maybe this is due to my lack of experience in that area. Uh, I was also reminded that you can market apps via other channels, not just rely on keywords, right? So that's another thing. But ultimately, I got really stuck. So by the end of that first week, I still hadn't come up with any solid ideas that I felt confident that I wanted to build. And then the next week I had vacation. So this was the last week of August. And every year, my family and I, it was just the four of us, we go to a local getaway, we rent an Airbnb. It's kind of like in the suburbs, suburbs. Um, I mean, kind of like in a, a really small town. And so we get to do things like, it's not full camping, but we get to do like a little campfire, roast s'mores, there's a beach nearby, and there's a local town for some ice cream, and you can sit down restaurants and that sort of thing. So it's nice, it's become a little family tradition. So we did that. I didn't think about work at all, completely disconnected, didn't think about potential app ideas or anything. So when I got back, that was the beginning of September. And in Canada, kids start school, first week of September. So we were caught up in that rush. And by the end of the first week of September, I still didn't have a solid app idea. And I was really beginning to get discouraged. I was thinking, I started, my brain started this self-defense mechanism telling me that it's okay if you withdraw or quit because it's still great experience, you know, and you can continue your app even after the deadline. It's just trying to protect me from the stress and anxiety. Right? And so I recognize that, but I still, I was still like struggling sitting at the desk trying to think of a good idea. And out of frustration, I decided to take a walk like this one. And I wasn't really specifically trying to think of anything. I was just enjoying the sunshine, going for a walk. And I realized that during the walk, I felt like much better. It improved my mood a lot. And that made me realize why not build an app that just helps keep top of mind the activities that make me feel better and improve my mood and reminds me to do those types of activities every day. For the rest of that day, I started thinking about what type of app this would be and what features it include. And I realized that well, it's pretty simple. It's just a task logger. You use Swift data, log some tasks, local notifications to send some reminders. 
totally doable on such short notice. Um, and so this became my hackathon app idea. And then on Friday morning, turned off Slack, turned off email, just turned on some music, dimmed the lights, and went into deep coding session mode. <laughs> and it's been a while since I've done that. So that was a really, really cool experience. Um, you know, getting to that flow state. The only difference was this time I decided to use ChatGPT, whereas normally it would be Google searching whenever I got stuck and looking for resources. Saved so much time just asking it uh, questions that I was stuck on and getting direct answers. By the end of Friday, I had the basic functionality built out. And then all that was left was to, well, there's actually a lot left from that point on, right? There's the design, there's the in-app purchasing because um, that's one of the requirements of the hackathon app. You have to submit it with in-app purchases powered by RevenueCat. And then there was also all of the submission metadata, the screenshots, the app icon, that sort of stuff. I'm gonna get back home and then show you how I accomplished those things. All right, so we're back at the computer now and I wanna show you how this app works and what it does. Oh, and by the way, I am going to record a tutorial on how I built this so we can follow along and share the project as well. All right, so it's a very simple app. Like I mentioned on the walk, you simply log the things that make you feel better each day, but first you have to add those things. So for example, going for a walk, which we just did, and also having coffee makes me feel better. Although I don't think I need a reminder to have a coffee because that's one of the first things I do. So we went for a walk. I'm going to check that on. And I also did have a coffee this morning. So that's basically it. And today's score is two, just based on the number of things that you logged. So if you want to try to improve that, you're going to do more things that make you feel better. And then you will just be in a more positive mood and you'll have a better day. Now, that's basically it. You can also delete these things if you would like. You can unlog them and every day this gets cleared and then you can start all over and make that day the best day. Now there are in-app purchases because that is a requirement of the hackathon and I locked the reminders feature behind the paywall. I didn't really want to do this because I consider reminders kind of a core feature. It's what makes the app useful. But ultimately, I went this route after considering different things and trying different things such as ads and stats and that sort of thing. I'll explain later on in this video how I arrived at this conclusion if you're interested in that journey. But before that, the last tab is just settings. So this whole thing was built from scratch and submitted and improved in the App Store in a span of like three days. Let me walk you through that process and what happened. So on the first day, it was pretty smooth sailing because we're building essentially a basic task logger using Swift data. And what made it a lot easier as well was the use of ChatGPT. And it was really the first time during my development that I really relied on this. So there are things that I forgot how to do that I did in the past, such as how do you limit the number of characters in a text field? I would just directly ask ChatGPT instead of Googling it. Whereas normally I'd have to search through a bunch of search results and hopefully one of the first few that I find has the code snippet that I need. But with this, I just type in the question. I mostly ignore all the text that it says, and then I just take a look at the code and it tells you exactly. Um, what I found really useful is even informational questions. For example, I would ask things. So here's another thing I forgot how to do, how to remove white spaces. I forgot the exact uh, method to use, trimming characters. For example, this one, I wasn't really sure. Do I have to display a dialogue if the user cancels an in-app purchase? I didn't know if the user cancels it. If I have to display a dialogue to say, you have canceled the transaction or user canceled, transaction canceled or whatever. And apparently you don't. Now, I don't know how much you can trust what it's saying, but I did pass uh, app review and the store, it, the app is ready to be released. I also asked it about how do you create a privacy manifest and things like that, but this really helped. So I'm going to record some tutorials in the future about um, leveraging this in your development and how to make the most of it. The other thing I tried to do 
let's use DAL E DAL E for image generation for the app. But the problem with this is that you really need to be able to articulate a design direction for it to generate images that you can use. I had an idea of what I wanted to show, but I didn't have a cohesive design in mind. And so putting these images into my app would look really out of place, right? So you really need to have a design direction in mind. So then you can tell AI what to do. So this wasn't really useful for me in this context. What I ultimately ended up doing was using icons eight, which I have access to. And I think some of this is free as well. So I went to illustrations and I went to all styles and I just started looking to see what other image assets I can use in my app. And I came across this one. And because of the simple color palette, first of all, I like the images themselves. And I realized that the simple color palette really helps guide my app in a certain direction. So you can see, I basically found the image that I wanted to use first, and then I based my app's color theme on those art assets. And that's how I ended up with this sort of blue and white theme, right? And so that's what I did for design. And as for the app icon, I really didn't want to put any thought into it because I was running out of time. I just needed something to show. So I grabbed this little squiggly and they had an art asset that's just like a little squiggly. And I used that as my uh, art asset. Yeah, there it is. That's the little squiggly. So I'll show you in a second how I did the app icon and app preview screenshots. But let's talk about in-app purchases. So I knew I needed to do something that the user can pay for. So I thought perhaps we could have a stats feature where you can make it a streak that you're doing this every day. I wanted to do something like this. Uh, I think this would be a super useful feature. It's just that I've never done this before. I've never built this. I never thought to look for libraries as well. Someone else has probably built this. But I was thinking, oh, I, I don't have much time, so I don't want to go and tinker around and try to build this. And then plus building the graph to display things is one thing that's just UI related, but you have to build the functionality behind it. And then that would add time for testing and be additional coding. What's something easier that I can do just to save time? How about ads? I was like, this is a good idea, right? You always see this in apps. You put in ads, you can earn some revenue and then you can pay like a dollar to unlock ads forever make it ad free. So this is the path I went down. I integrated the ad mob SDK and I actually ran into problems using their Swift package instructions. And I, I wasn't able to build the project after I added it. After wrestling with it for a couple of hours, I decided that I needed to change gears and I didn't want to spend any more time on this. So then I decided to bite the bullet and build out the local notifications reminders feature and uh, put it behind a paywall. So number one, I didn't, I wanted reminders as a core feature, didn't want to lock it behind a paywall. I wasn't going to build it for this version because how I imagined it working was that you can set reminders and you can customize the reminders. And you can also choose which days and all of that stuff, right? There would be a lot of control to make it worth unlocking and worthy of being a cool feature for this app. But that's why I tabled it because I didn't th think I have time to build it up to my vision. But ultimately I decided I could include it as a simple, simple feature. And so let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to rerun the app, but without the paywall and I really, really simplified it to the point where I don't even think it's super duper useful. And something like this, you can turn it on, you can select a time and it's just going to remind you every single day and you can't set the message. It's very limited, but we can build off of it. So that's one, actually one lesson I learned in this hackathon is it really forced me to simplify and throw perfection out the window. So that's ultimately what I did as an in-app purchase, but the paywall that you saw was really cool. I did some videos on integrating RevenueCat before, as well as using their paywall feature, but 
I, I forgot how easy this was. Literally took me five minutes to select the template, customize some of this text. Like I uploaded this image. I changed some of this text. It's got dynamic variables here for the pricing and stuff. I changed the color of the button and I just basically hit save. And then through the SDK, I could refer to this default paywall and launch it. And I got it showing up in my project in 15 minutes. So very helpful. And then all the purchasing functionality is built in here. You don't need to do anything. All you need to do is make sure that your content is unlocked when the user has a certain privilege level, which is called uh, entitlements in Revenue Cat. So I would just basically, I created a, an entitlement level in my Revenue Cat app called Pro. And then I would check the status of this entitlement. And if the user had it as true, then I would let them get into the uh, paywall tab. And that would be this. So that's what happened with in-app purchases. Now let's talk about submission. And that itself was a whole bunch of work as well as a whole bunch of testing and making sure that the app adheres to the guidelines. Before you can submit your app, you need to make sure you test it thoroughly. And our app here is pretty simple, but the thing that worried me the most was actually the in-app purchases. It was going to be the first time that I have an in-app purchase live that people could actually buy. No, that's not true. Wait, that is true. Yes, <laughs> this is so long ago. I had a children's app, which I made as a paid app. So that's how I made a little bit of money from the app store, but I've never had a live in-app purchase. What really came in handy was um, the the sandbox testing guides from RevueCat. Long story short, this is how you do it. Under App Store Connect in Users and Access, there's a sandbox testers section. I don't want to click in there. There's all sorts of emails and stuff, but you can then add a new email address to create a test account. And then on your device, under App Store, you can add a sandbox tester account. So then the account you create here inside Sandbox Testers, that's the one you would add on your device. In Settings, App Store, you scroll all the way to the bottom. You might have to have developer settings turned on, and then you can add that Sandbox Tester. I'll create a tutorial on this in the future, as well as the ad mob stuff. I got to figure this out because I do want to build apps with ads in the future. It's just that I was out on time crunch for this. Okay, so we talked about testing you have to test that users can restore purchases, that things are unlocked when they buy it. And if it's a subscription, you have more things to test. But my in-app purchase is just a single unlock. So I guess in that sense, it's a little better. You have to test that when you delete the app and you reinstall it, that you can get your purchase back and things like that. So the review cat actually has a pretty cool checklist that you can go through, uh, walking through all of the different scenarios. You should make sure it works 100%. So that's in here. The other thing you have to do is the app store screenshots, right? And the app icon. So here's what I did for the mood tracker app back then we have a Figma file and we have these here. And all I did was I replaced the images that I basically in the simulator, you can take screenshots, press this button or press command S to take a screenshot. And I would replace this image with the screenshot that I took, which would then change this. And then I would add, you know, add some text there and change the background and things like that. So this was all prepared for the Mood Tracker app. I just created a copy of this file and made these edits. As for the app icon, same thing. I just added that image that I got from Icons 8, this little noodle. And then I changed the background color and exported it and added it to Xcode. Right, so that's how I got the images. Other things that we need to worry about, the description. So this was fun because it's the first time that I've used this. So I just basically described my app to ChatGPT and asked it to write an App Store description. I think it did pretty good considering that it has no idea of what features are in my app. Check this out. My app helps users to have a better day by helping them stay conscious of the activities that make them feel positive and to log them on a daily basis. By doing more of these uplifting activities each day, the user will be in a better mood and have a positive outlook in life. 
Can you write an app store description for the app features and benefits while you love it? I love it. So I copied that. I edited it a little bit and then just pasted it in there. And as for the keywords, I found these keywords using the Astro app, which is built by my friend Matteo. I'm going to have to record a video on how to use this tool as well in the future. I don't have a license on my Mac, unfortunately, so I can't launch the app and show you here. I have it on my MacBook. Okay, so that that handles keywords. We have to talk about, okay, before we're talking about the app review information, let's talk about app privacy. Now, first of all, you need a privacy policy. And I basically just used the tool that I found on Google, app privacy policy generator, use this. And uh, yeah, created one. It's just, there are a bunch of different ones. You just click make selections and spits it out. Now you have to host it somewhere though. I've seen people host it on Facebook pages. I hosted it on codewithchris.com. I've seen people also host it on Notion. So Notion, if you don't know, is kind of like a text pad or a notepad tool, like a writing tool. So you would literally paste your privacy policy here and then you can hit share and you can make it public. And then you can use that URL as your privacy policy URL. I've seen that before live in the app store. So that means that it works and it passes. But I also had to fill out these nutrition labels. That's what they call these privacy policy or app nutrition labels. These appear in the app store listing at the bottom because you're responsible for all of the code in your project, even the third party SDKs that you add. So you need to understand what sorts of information um, is being tracked and how it's being used. And you have to specify that through this interface here. Okay. So the only one that we've used here in this app is revenue cat. And luckily they have a whole page dedicated to this telling you based on the options that are available here, how to fill that out for revenue cat only. If you have additional SDKs and if you use different things in your app that, you know, are tracking the user, you need to specify that stuff here. And there are instructions. They do give you some guidance on how to fill things out. Like, okay, this is what's considered yes or no. So use your best judgment there. Uh, but the other thing is that as of May, 2024, they also require you to put a privacy manifest in your Xcode project. So that actually looks like, pull that up here. So in the project, it looks like this. You have to add this file to your Xcode project. And in this file, you have to specify more or less the same stuff you just specified in App Store Connect. But this is bundled with your project. And so it's just another way of specifying that stuff. Now, this usually is pretty tedious to do. There is documentation on Apple. But what makes it easier is if you open it in source code, to view as source code, sorry. And you can do this with your plist as well. It's just an XML file. And this tool by Donnie Walls, very, very helpful. It lets you just select a different, I mean, you still have to understand which APIs you're using and how you're using it, but you can read this stuff to make your selections. And then you can come down here and there are different things as well. Like for example, you know that and you add it. Anyways, this makes it so much easier because after you select all of the stuff that you're using and how it's being used, you just hit copy to clipboard. You know, it's generated this for you based off of your selections on the left. And then you just paste it in here and you're done. So that worked out well for me. Thank you so much, Donnie, for creating this super useful tool. Uh, okay. What else do we have to talk about in here? I think that's basically all the information that I had to specify. So the app was submitted to the app store for review on Tuesday evening. And by Wednesday morning, I had already gotten a notification saying that it was under review. And then a few hours later, it said it was accepted. So I was so happy because I was just assuming the worst and I would just assume that it was going to get rejected for some reason or another. Maybe it was my in-app purchases, something was wrong. And I thought 
I would have to resubmit. And I was worried that the app review would take a long time and I wouldn't have another cycle to submit and get it into the store in time for the deadline. Because on September 19th, it has to be live in the store. But I knew as soon as it was under review, I was like, whether it gets rejected or approved, this is great. Because if it gets rejected, I have time to make changes and resubmit and still hopefully get reviewed and uh, get released. But the fact that it passed on the first try, there's nothing more I can ask for than that. So this is a really, I'm really happy about that. Can't wait to share all the lessons that I've learned. You know, one of the things I, I mentioned is that I learned how to simplify. I was forced to due to the time, time constraint. And also in this app, I had to cut out a lot of stuff. I cut a lot of corners, to be honest. I wanted to submit it as soon as possible because I was worried about this whole review process taking a long time and not making the deadline. And so I, I didn't even add analytics to the app. I wanted to flesh out some of the features, such as the reminders features. You can see I only added three app preview screenshots, which is very little. And the app icon barely has anything to do with the actual um, app. But the thing is, I can release it on time. I can make the hackathon. And yeah, I'm really, really happy. I'm glad I didn't listen to my mental voice telling me to just quit and that it's okay if I don't make it. Because if I listened to it, then I wouldn't have gotten to this point. Now in the following videos, I'm going to show how to build this app. I'm going to share uh, the lessons that I've learned by doing this hackathon. And I am also going to dive a little deeper into some of the things I've learned just from setting out to build out an app idea all the way to submitting the app because there are a lot of new things that I've learned. And I can't wait to share those with you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.